And as long as you're having fun, it doesn't matter what you come up with. It doesn't matter what the end result looks like. You're just enjoying yourself. Welcome back and today we're just going to talk about creativity. So the objective for today is I just want to play around. I'm going to come up with something and I'm just going to kind of ramble on and talk about creativity, what it is, what it means to me and what it can help you guys do. So just getting started, I just have a regular base with a pipe and I'm going to put some newspaper up here, tape it up just because I'm going to start with a portrait. I'm not sure what I'm going to create. I don't know what kind of character I'm going to create. I'm just going to have fun. And as long as you're having fun, it doesn't matter what you come up with. It doesn't matter what the end result looks like. You're just enjoying yourself. And so that is what this is going to be. Now, the game plan is I'm just going to kind of spout out some things and just kind of go with the flow. That way, this is kind of like just a free form just talking to you guys. Um, I'm not sure what's going to come out and I'm not going to apologize for it either. I'm just going to warn you guys that I'm not sure exactly the direction this is going to take, but we're going to have fun and I'm going to show you guys what I come up with at the end of this session, regardless of how horrible it turns out or how great it turns out. As long as you're enjoying yourself <clears throat> and having a good time, that's, <clears throat> that's really all that matters. So with that... I am just going to go ahead and get this started. <clears throat> Again, just tossing this up here, using some tape to secure it. This just, whenever you're doing a portrait bust, this, let me stop talking while I tape this. Whenever you're doing a portrait bust, this just basically gives the clay something to grab onto. That way, as you're working and later on, as you're adding more weight and more clay to it, it doesn't slide down the pipe and get destroyed. But we're going to go ahead and get started. Creativity is something that each and every one of us has. It's something that we were all born with. When we were kids, we did all kinds of creative things. And the most amazing thing was that when we were kids, we didn't worry about the outcome. We didn't worry or stress over it being horrible or it not being good. That didn't come until a little bit later on in life after we started going to school, after we started getting a little bit older into our teenage years to where we started, um, I'm going to say kind of grading ourselves on it and comparing ourselves to others and things like that. However, when you were young, you were a kid, it's, it was something that you just did and have fun with. If a picture wasn't turning out exactly as you liked it, you just threw it away and grabbed another paper. And if you did something that you really enjoyed and like you might you know give it to your mom and have her hang it on a fridge or something like that a lot of times though what happened is you just moved on, you still just moved on to something else you got excited you had fun you enjoyed the picture that you were coloring at the end of it you're like oh this turned out pretty cool and then all of a sudden you know something else comes up and you start making another picture or it's time to eat or you decide you want to go outside and play and at that moment, you're no longer worried about how good or how bad the picture was. But in today's world, we hold on to that for a long time, much longer. We might hold on to it for an extra 10 minutes. We might hold on to it for an hour or a day. And the problem with that is that it just ends up eating away at us because you're constantly telling yourself, I'm not, I'm not a creative or I'm not that good at doing this kind of art. Mm. 
However, art, and it doesn't even have to be sculpting or painting or drawing, any kind of creative thing, even baking or photography or crafts or coloring in a coloring book. When you do things like that, it's, for me, it's a very fun and therapeutic way to kind of let go of things. You kind of get to drift off into your own special world to where nothing else matters. You can drop all the problems of what happened during the day or what's going on in this area or in the world. And you get to enter into your own special imaginative place. And that's one of one of the great things about just kind of drifting off and doing this creative stuff. And again, it doesn't matter if you create a masterpiece or not. The whole purpose is to use it as a little meditative session to where you release. You can just forget about the world and have some fun. However, since I said that though, the, you can use it as its own form of meditation to where you can really let out your emotions. If you don't want to drift away and get away from everything and drift into your own special world, you can also use this to release everything that you're going through. So think about, you know, there's different things with creative writing and just letting just letting your hand move and seeing what kind of words are formed, what kind of words come out. You can do that with art too and just letting go of these crazy brush strokes or just scribbling in a chaotic way and using it as something to where you can just let it all out and even in sometimes throw it away. Because I know that's what they do in creative writing sometimes is you write down a lot of the things that are strugg struggling with or trying to get rid of or releasing. And it's almost like talking to yourself or talking to somebody and you just jot it all down on a page. And after, after you're done, you feel free. And sometimes they even, you know, you, go, you can even go into throwing it away or setting it on fire. And it's, it's a way of, I guess, finding closure and kind of getting rid of it and saying, you know, this is no longer going to be, this is no longer going to bother me. And so that's something else that you can use creativity to, to help you get rid of and let go of things. So... Not only is it a therapy, but it also helps you to find your own sense of freedom. You go into this place, whether it's into your own mind or whether you're letting go of, you know, the world or things that might be happening and you just have fun. You create for the moment and you know, going back to that meditation and making time for it is something else that's, that I have found to be very, very relaxing and fun. However, I've also found that when I don't make time for myself that it doesn't get done and you can also feel it to where it's like, you have an itch and you don't really feel like getting up and doing things. But at the same time, you can also feel your, I guess you can feel your, your mental emotions just kind of a little bit more on the surface. You get a little bit more agitated, a little bit more quickly, kind of something along those lines. And so make sure you make time for yourself to have your own freedom. You can also look at it as, you know, when you schedule yourself for vacation, you take off for everything else, right? You don't, you don't still work. You basically go all in 
when you go and you travel or you have a vacation for yourself to do something or to get something done, you go all in and you let the rest of the world kind of disappear for the, for the moment and for that time and you come back to it later. So when you're being creative, you can do that as well. And it'll give you a sense of mental clarity that just lets go of everything that's kind of stressing you out or getting on you. All right, so I have no idea what this is. This is just some kind of creature, alien-esque type of thing. And I'm just kind of going with it, seeing what comes out and just kind of chasing the rabbit, seeing where the ideas lead me. And some things I'll like, some things I won't add, take away, and just keep having fun. Another thing is, usually I set a timer. However, I didn't hit start when I did this, but I'm just gonna keep going. The timer is something, is one of those things that's actually a very useful and good tool for me. However, it's not something that I compare or judge myself against. It's there as strictly a tool to kind of get me into a mode. So what I mean by that is that when you tell yourself, I'm going to go in and I'm going to do work and just leave it at that, your mind very easily wants to procrastinate and put it off because you're not giving it anything, but I'm gonna go in there and work. And it sounds like you're gonna be in there forever. But what if you said, you know what? This is something that needs to get done and I don't necessarily have to finish it, but I at least wanna get it started. That way it's a little bit of less time later on. I'm gonna go in there for 10 minutes. When you tell yourself I'm gonna go in there for 10 minutes and you hold to that to where you say you're going to set a timer. When it's done, I can either get, I can keep going if I want, but I can get up and leave. And that does something and switches your, the way that your mind is working and looking at things. And it helps you to get up a lot easier. So if I come in here and say, you know, I'm going to do a half hour session, then you're telling yourself, all right, well, it's only going to be a half hour. And after that, I can kind of decide. And what usually happens is you get, you just need help getting up and getting started. Because once you get started working on something, then you get pulled in and you get excited and time kind of slows down. So that's why I use the timer a lot, whether it's on doing this or whether it's working on other things. Um, also, just keeping track of certain things that I do. So, I like, I will, every morning I read for about 20 minutes. I also meditate for about a half hour to an hour every morning. And so, setting the timer just keeps, keeps myself on track with doing those things. Alright, so... This guy's going a little weird and in a uh, kind of evil direction, so I'm going to try to switch up and maybe make him a little goofier or happier or slyer. I don't know yet. That. No, let's grab this. Just creating on the fly and seeing what what kind of characters might come out, what might happen. Is a, is super interesting. Even if you just go in and you grab like a sheet of paper or a notebook and just start scribbling, and then start looking at shapes and seeing what comes out, almost like looking into the clouds. I found that a lot of my characters have come from this and just seeing where um, 
just kind of seeing what comes out. Because there's something in the subconscious that I'm not really connecting to. Or that you might not be aware of that just kind of comes out and shows through. And these are characters that and things that you would have never come up with on your own or if you were planning it. And so that's part of the fun too is when I'm doing these little sketches and these studies. And it's the reason I like doing these more than continuously working on a piece and finishing pieces is because... There's so much discovery in this stage that I like. And so after it gets past that, even though there is still a lot of work to be done, it's not the f most enjoyable part for me. Now, of course, that's also just a personal thing because there's a lot of people that aren't are good but don't care a whole lot for blocking in and you know creating the main character and they just love going in with the details and really bringing it to life but for me personally this is always i don't like that this is always the funnest part i don't even like the mouse so we're gonna get rid of this don't be afraid to change shit and get rid of different things that you don't like and continually just kind of play around with it and what the what the expression is kind of bring your character to life yeah And so when I look at this, this is all playtime. This is all just seeing what can come out of this big ball and lump of clay and creating shapes that are going to kind of bring it to life. And so with that and with, you know, me sharing with you guys what I'm doing, the other thing that I want to help bring to the world and more people with about creativity is just having fun and using it as almost like a therapy to help you to release and to overcome any of the obstacles that you have. And so with the new course I built, it does that for in a few different ways by helping you guys rediscover and kind of start getting back into your creativity and so I have the video covers and helps people to start easy start simple and find their own creative voice so I have a, some videos on just starting out with a smiley face because everybody says I'm not creative or I could never do that I could never make that and the other biggest one is everybody's like, ah, you know, I can't even create or I can't even draw a stick figure. That's another one of the big ones I always hear. But it's like people aren't really in the market or want to see stick figures. So make something better. But starting with a smiley face, everybody can do it. Everybody can draw one. Everybody can draw any kind, especially with emojis out there. People can draw different emojis and if you can just start with something like that you can start adding on different features to it and so that's where I started with it and so for the videos they are going to be for beginners and families and kids to get started to be able to have a starting point so they're not starting from scratch because that's another thing that stops a lot of people they're like i'm not exactly sure where to even start like do i get clay do i get this and do i how do i start making shapes or where should i try to do and so giving you a little assignment of doing a smiley face or starting with a block of clay or starting with a random shape it gives you a starting and a base point and from there 
you can actually, your creativity will start showing through. You'll start getting back in touch with that inner child that you have. And now on the flip side, these videos can also be of great use to more seasoned artists and sculptors in the sense of these are videos that can help you to push past creative blocks and get you past being stuck by getting back into the basics of finding of just creating new things when you're stuck because something even something as simple as well i don't know about simple but just something as simple an idea as this can get you out of a rut and out of a block because you're not having any expectations and you're also just kind of reconnecting with yourself and your soul and figuring out and figuring things out and coming up with whatever whatever happens and so these exercises can be used to when you're in a block and you're thinking, ah, oh, you, a lot of times when we get in blocks, we think too way too much. And so you're thinking, what should I be making? What should I be creating? I don't know what to sculpt. I don't know what to make. And we go into that, we go into that spiral. And so with these, these are very simple things. Like let's take a, let's do a, Let's take a random shape that we're going to create and don't even think about it, but just draw a shape in clay. And then take that shape and kind of twist it or turn it around and see what kind of characters we can make or what do you see coming out of this or what can you make with this shape? You know, so real, let me see, real simply, Taking, you know, what if you were to take a flat thing of clay and draw some crazy wild shape on it? And what if you could turn it around and see what kind of character do I see? What kind of creature do I see? Like, obviously with this, just looking this direction, you know, you could easily, I could add on an eye here. Um, maybe a horn or something here. This would be the character's neck. This would kind of be the back almost like having a hunchback a Mouth here doing this you would add some cheekbones here Kind of cart cut this out add a little bit here see what you can make but just using this simple shape as an idea It gives you a starting point to where you're not stuck anymore And so that's why I think that this new series that I just put out can, can help to inspire creatives from all areas and all walks. Because even me personally, I've been sculpting for approximately 12 or 13 years, but yet I still use these because they help to unlock new characters, new ideas that I wouldn't have come to on my own just trying to think about it. All right, so. I still don't really know what to do with his face and what it's actually going to look like. I'm going to try again to give him a nose and see if that brings anything out that it didn't bring out before. Creativity is all about experimentation. Trying things actually it kind of goes flows in with life in general just trying new things out seeing what sticks seeing what you enjoy 
And so if you were to just give something like this a try, you're not going to know if you enjoy it until after you at least give it a shot. Which leads to another trail of a lot of people that don't believe themselves to be creative will say that I tried, but I couldn't do it. And the problem is, is that when you somebody says they tried, they usually mean they tried to draw something super amazing. They gave it about five minutes. It didn't work because the painting they're trying to copy was painted over the course of a month or a couple weeks and they couldn't knock it out in five minutes on their first try. And so they say that they can't do it. And so what if you actually gave yourself a shot to try and actually enjoy the process rather than the outcome and then take what you enjoy and do it again and see if you don't get just a 1% better just a little bit of progress All right, so he, she, it is turning. So the nose gave me an idea to start and expanding on the mouth. This is turning towards a fawn type of character. Just because we already had the ears here that already kind of look like it. And so if I were to add now I don't even know. Originally I was thinking almost like a deer or fawn type of character. However, now the horns, I don't know exactly how they should be because you could actually do those or even more of a ram type of horns. With little added elements like this, what I usually like to do is just kind of add something that might resemble what's going to come and make it super simple to where you only spend less than a minute on it. And you just kind of place them and then kind of keep working and seeing where else you're gonna go. And so with this, toss those on, did the same thing with the ears to where I don't spend a whole lot of time and just kind of add them to see if I like them. And as you're working around a piece and working on the rest of it, you'll kind of see it in your peripheral vision and you'll see if it matches the character or not. And that way later on when you decide, hey, you know, the ears don't really look right, they don't match the character, you didn't spend two hours working on them and detailing them. And so you, you're, it's a lot easier to kind of take them off and say, it doesn't work. So don't be afraid to, to change things. Scrap things, move things around, shift it. Just whatever happens and whatever needs to happen. All right, so I've been working on this piece for about, and talking to you guys for about a half hour. So I'm going to kind of leave it at this and maybe come back to it, maybe not. But the idea of this was that it was a fun sketch. It was something fun and creative to do. And so this is how I go through and work on a lot of my pieces to where I just go in and enjoy 
finding different shapes, finding different ideas and characters through the clay rather than having an idea in mind. Now it's not always the case and there's a lot of different techniques that I use whether it's starting with a ball of clay and just kind of adding on or there's also I also like looking at and trying to bring to life pictures with my alter ego portraits to where I'll either use an actor or an actress or somebody famous or a friend and just kind of try to capture a likeness but then kind of tweak it to see what kind of character I can turn them into or bring them to life or change them into a superhero and so this is just one of many things that you can create, you can start, and how just the act of actually being creative and flexing those creative muscles, that's the only way that those creative muscles are gonna get stronger. So I hopefully you guys have enjoyed this. I'm gonna share a link to my new video series as well as some of my free tutorials on my website that you guys can check out. But thank you guys for listening, thanks for sticking with me for this long as I rambled on and just kind of followed where my brain took me, which is in all different directions. Um, please let me know if you guys enjoyed this video, if there's anything you would like to see in the future, and I will do my best to help anybody that is looking to try to overcome any of their obstacles and how to use something like this as a tool to actually help you do that instead of, you know, getting doused with medication and other other things like that. Now, obviously there are certain situations, but this and meditation and things like that are something that can definitely help in addition to if needed. So thank you guys for watching and I will talk to you guys next week.